Good evening and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show where lies win the prize. On David Mitchell's team tonight, a comedian recently voted one of the 100 most powerful women in Britain. Yes, not only is she hilarious, she can also toss a caber and drag a tractor using just her teeth. It's Sarah Millican. <laughs> comedian who is famous for his compulsive obsessive disorder. And yes, I said that the wrong way around on purpose, just to unnerve him. It's John Richardson. <laughs> and on Lee Max team tonight, he's the comedy legend that gave us the anarchic shooting stars. We're no strangers to anarchy here. Uh, David Mitchell's not even wearing a tie tonight. It's Bob Mortimer. <laughs> He's the Homeland star who left Birmingham to go to Hollywood, but says one day he wants to return. Oh, he is a good actor. It's David Harewood. <laughs> and so we begin with round one, Home Truths, where our panelists read out a statement from the card in front of them. Now, to make things harder, they've never seen the card before, so they've no idea what they'll be faced with. And it's up to the opposing team to sort the fact from the fiction. Okay, Bob, you're first up tonight. Thank you. I once set fire to my house with a box of fireworks. David Mitchell's team. Uh, was this on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, it was done out of ignorance. <laughs> what age were you? I was somewhere around about seven. I want to know where you grew up, where a seven-year-old can buy a box of fireworks. I bought them in the shop where, near where I lived in Middlesbrough. It was a box for two and six of standard fireworks. That was the brand. <laughs> standard <laughs> brand. That sounds exciting. <laughs> standard fireworks. Yeah. A normal level of excitement will be endeavoured. <laughs> <laughs> for a bonfire night, you will forget. <laughs> <laughs> but it says standard, but yeah. then it's... Well, that is it? standard for a firework. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in your home, yeah, and no, you're seven or eight years old. I'm seven, and I'm on my own, yeah. On your okay. own. Yeah, and what it was late, what, on one of the fireworks, I think it was the sparkers, it said, not suitable for indoor use. Mm -hmm. Which, at that age, makes you think, ah, that ah. means they're okay. Could you just not read the word not when you were a brain? <laughs> <laughs> Did you think not was the brand? <laughs> Oh, lovely. I, I love that not brand food. It's not for human consumption. <laughs> no, that logic that says, well, people have obviously tried them indoors. Oh, they've discovered just... they're not suitable. Yeah. <laughs> so therefore, I won't use them indoors because I want to live. If you look at a big firework, it won't say not suitable for indoors. It's, so, it's obvious. Yeah. Right. But well, in the sparklers, everybody. they chose to put it on. So what happened? I lit the sparkler. The, the sparks went into the box of fireworks, a standard box, <gasps> and set them off. And I carried the box of fireworks, now beginning to light, into the kitchen, and I threw them into the kitchen. I thought it would be more suitable. <laughs> I think you're right. The kitchen of all the rooms is the most suitable for fireworks, <laughs> isn't it? Because of the oven, the gas, the it's... stove, there is fire naturally in the kitchen. Yeah, there's a lot of... and there's more... it's more wipe down, yes. Yes. less cloth. <laughs> so what happened then? They went off in the, um, What kitchen. was the sound like? Was it bing, whee! <laughs> no, these were only standard. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, can't remember, I remember, as I'm sat here now, um, wiping the scorch marks off the floor and thinking that my mum's going to kill me. Yeah. And so I'm going to be in big trouble. Then I went back into the living room, unbeknownst I... to me, yeah. I dropped one. <gasps> and it was, the living room was completely engulfed in oh. flames. It sounds to me that if you're on your own at home at seven, your mum's pretty laid back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> He said, son, will you sit here and look after these fireworks? <laughs> <laughs> That's that about to the bingo. <laughs> so, you lit the sparkler. A spark went into the standard box. Yes. The box starts to go, you go, uh-oh, I must get them into the most suitable room for fireworks. <laughs> yes. The kitchen. No need to go beyond the kitchen to the outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> Mum said, don't go out. <laughs> It's good to know there was at least one oh. rule in your house. <laughs> <laughs> what time of day did all this happen? This happened mid-afternoon. 
Oh, dear, so you didn't really get the benefit of it. Who got a fire out? I went to the next door where Miss Best lived. She was, about, bless her, she was about 80. And I knocked on their door and said, my house is on fire. And she said, do you know, I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened then? She called the fire brigade. They fired their water hoses throughout the house. Yes. Ruining it. Even the rooms Ru where they're... Not, ruining, not, oh, yeah. not ruining it. Yeah. You do know that before they put out fires, it's already ruined, don't you? Lee. You're making this house all wet. It was lovely and warm. Lee. Lee. And it's the water damage yeah. that knackers the house. Which, Is it? Not yeah. the fire? Not the fire. <laughs> if they would use their boots to put it out. Honestly, <laughs> the entire house, that's it. I was, in a, I was in a family of four children, and we, had, we were homeless. Where were... <laughs> what, keeping light? No, I'm just saying. Where were all the other kids while you were alone with the fire? Why did you take three They were looking after fireworks you. in other people's houses. <laughs> 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 so when you say you were homeless, how much of the house did the inferno claim? It's gone. Entire it's house what, the gone. Whole house, whole house gone. Yeah. The whole house burnt whole house. down. Burnt down. So how much did you leave in the living room? The fireworks in the kitchen have only caused a few scorches. Yeah. What did you leave in the living room? And now, and now, don't you feel stupid for saying standard fireworks? Yeah. I tell Not you, they really. Well, I think you were stupid. They had like a kid. sparkler indoors. <laughs> if you don't know what you dropped yeah. in the living room, is there a chance that it's just a coincidence? No, it could be. That it might not have been your fault. <laughs> That's what I said to the press. Not your fault. <laughs> press, who, what, what press? Who, who, who did you speak to? Local press. Because they, they came to the house while it was burning? Yeah, you know, they're, they're hats on, trilbies, <laughs> sniffing around. <laughs> with, those, with those little bits of paper in the, <laughs> in the notebook. The yeah. Were they called things like Scoop McLean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I believe it was called Ron Waffle. Sorry, Ron, Ron Waffle. It was either him or the other ace reporter on the Gazette was John Caramel. It was one of them two. Caramel and Waffle. <laughs> Honestly. I mean, the question is whether you think Bob has been telling the truth. Well, I, was, I thought it seemed very plausible until we heard about <laughs> Caramel and Waffle. <laughs> I think he thinks he's telling the truth, but I think what's happened at some point he's seen a film in which this has happened. He saw backdrop. And is now convinced <laughs> that it happened to him. I think it's a lie. Vera. I, oh, I sort of. I was going to say I want it to be true, but that sounds really horrible. <laughs> I think. I don't I think it might be true. Well, I think it's true. I think it's true. So you're going to go for true? Yeah. Okay, Bob. Were you telling the truth or were you telling. A lie. I was telling the truth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. Bob once set fire to his house with a box of fireworks. John, you're next. When I'm stressed, I often take a water-free bath. <laughs> water-free baths. Liam, his team. <laughs> do you, uh, do you get undressed? No. Do you, do you just sit in the bath? Well, I lie in the bath. Oh, of course, because you want to get the imaginary water all over your body, don't you? <laughs> do you imagine there's water in the bath, or do you, does your mind accept it's not there? No, you know it's not there. I'm not, I'm not an idiot. I know it's not there. <laughs> do you have a hovering dock? <laughs> <laughs> how long do you spend in this position? Uh, well, it depends on how stressed I am. If I'm very stressed, I'll be in there a long time. If I'm only a little bit stressed, I'll pop in and I'll pop out again. But what's, what's the benefit? What, I don't see what is stress relieving. Well, a bath it. is stress relieving, isn't it? But then it's quite a faff, isn't it? Running the water, <laughs> taking your clothes off, then you're wet. You can't go out when you're wet, so you've got to dry yourself. Uh. Then you've got to put your clothes back on. Well, if why you just get in without all that faff, you get all the joy of a bath and none of the fuss. <laughs> <laughs> you're from the north, I bet you've got an, just an imaginary flannel. You said that like you're not from the north. I'm not. <laughs> if you said that, I mean, I, I, I've completely converted now. Have you told your accent? <laughs> Are you always alone? <laughs> oh, wow. Sir, do you mean in life or in the back? <laughs> Whichever one he wants to answer. <laughs> I, you always should be in the bath alone. I think we'll all agree. John, do you do any, like, bath-related things when you're in the non-bath, or do you just shut your eyes and lie there? 
Uh, sometimes I'll put my dressing gown on over me, or a big towel. To over your clothes? Over your clothes. Over me. I'll oh, get in the into bath. the bath. Oh, in the bath. Oh, right. right. Now right. suddenly got a bit more disturbing. It's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> It's a stress relief, isn't it? I don't just sit there, like, in the bath, like, you know, yeah. I don't smoke. But... You can have an imaginary cigarette if you're having an imaginary bath. It's not... <laughs> <laughs> so what are you thinking, Lee? Does this, does this smack of the truth? Um, what do we think, David? I think it's total nonsense. Do you? Yeah. Putting the thing over your head, I think it would add to the stress, as opposed to relieving it. I'm going for a lie. You're going for a lie? I'm going for a lie. Going for a lie in his bath, fully clothed. <laughs> Actually, come to think, a fart's not going to be half the fun in this non-bath, is it? <laughs> so we're going to say lie? Lie. My team say lie, so I have to go with them and You're say lie. You're all saying it's a lie. OK, yeah. John Richardson, were you just telling us the truth, or were you telling a lie? It was, sadly, true. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no, no, no! I want it to I bet end the show there. Let's end the show there, we'll have a quick chat with John, we'll bring on Jeremy Kyle, and we'll just end it there. Yes, it's true. When John is stressed, he has a water-free bath. <laughs> Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. Now, this week, each of Lee's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest, and it's up to David's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Keith. Bob, first of all. Bob, what is Keith to you? Uh, this is Keith. He's my oldest friend. And when we were at school together, we had a dictaphone in the classroom ceiling to confuse our teacher. Uh, David Harewood. Uh, this is my old teacher, Keith. I once had to claim I wasn't me when I met him in a cafe as I was in character preparing for Homeland. And finally, Lee, uh, your relationship with Keith. This is Keith and his hawk... Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'll admit, David, it's a difficult start. <laughs> well, go with it. Yeah. <laughs> this is Keith. And his hawk was supposed to land on my arm at a village fete, but instead stole the wig from the man next to me and flew off into a tree. So there we are. It's uh, Bob's classroom prankster, it's David's blanked buddy, or it's Lee's hawk. Handler, David's team, where do you start? So, yes, David, what, he was a teacher at your school? Very briefly. What, a whole lesson? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know if, I mean, I could, I would see him. You in, but he didn't in, teach in, you? No, not teach He was me. someone who hung around a school. <laughs> he was, charitably, you assumed he was a teacher. <laughs> but if he was at the school a short period of time, how did you even recognise him in the cafe? Oh, I knew it was him. Mm -hmm. He walked into the cafe and he said, Hi, David, and basically I blanked him. It was literally the, the month before I went to America when I was doing uh, uh, Homeland, and I'd just been to see my dialect coach. He basically said, I have to stay in my American voice. So, Would you not have explained that to yeah. him in your American voice? I'm I, sorry, I, buddy, but I'm doing a wall here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was ever as good as that, John, to be fair. I basically just had to say, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, that's... I, I'm actually, remembering you now. Do, do the voice a bit more. I straight. said, I don't know what you're talking about. Ooh, I did weird things to me. <laughs> so your dialect coach said, you're in this role, you need to stay in this character. Yeah. Now the lesson's over, let's go to a very public place. Yeah. We are likely to encounter several people. Well, that's what you have to do. You have to stay in that voice. You have to have the confidence to stay in your voice. Why can't you, you just, like, turn it on like an actor? <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a cheap shot, Sarah. I did, I have to say, I did phone him up afterwards and apologise. So you had his number? <laughs> <laughs> you stayed in touch with the teacher you barely remember. <laughs> Would it be fair to say the hawk's looking a bit more plausible?